Hello guys, this is Crystal. I'm coming at you tonight with a video about my pet rats. Um, you might not know that I got these rats, but they were born in February and a few months after that I got them. They were originally supposed to be feeder rats online and the lady was getting out of business, so she gave them to me for like a dollar a piece. And they're really good rats. Yeah. The black one is Master Splinter. The Dumble Rat is Bigums. And Thumbelina is the gray rat with the white belly. She's back here somewhere hiding. Let me see. Okay. This is Master Splinter. Yeah. I thought Master Splinter was a guy at first. So, this is Bigums. She's a Dumbo rat. See? So cute. And Thumbelina. Hopefully she's back here. Oh, it's Master Splinter again. Thumbelina, where are you? Okay, here she is. Here is Thumbelina. Yeah. Anyway, they're good rats. And so they're all girls. And they were originally feeder rats. And the lady got out of the feeder business. So they became my pets. So um, basically, you may or may not know that female rats, rats in general are prone to tumors. But female rats are prone to mammary tumors. And they have mammary tissue like all I see Sylvester lurking in the background, but they have mammary tissue, not just where humans have them in the breast area, but they have mammary tissue all up and down like the abdomen area. So they can develop mammary tumors like anywhere up from like here down to down to the groin area because all of that is mammary tissue in rats. So they can develop um, tumors anywhere up and down there. So rats are prone to tumors and of course since these are chicks, they're prone to mammary tumors. So that's the reason why I consider spaying them because if you spay them, you reduce the risk of mammary tumors because you reduce the influ influence of hormones that cause these tumors. Just like with human females, they say that um, if you start your period early and go through menopause late or um, you don't have any pregnancies or you never take birth control pills, you have a higher risk of ovarian tumors because your ovaries have just been working, 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 and you've been under the influence of those hormones instead of having the hormones suppressed out at an even, even level. So even with humans, you know, it is uh, reproductive area cancers are, are common, unfortunately. So, um, yeah. So a lot of times, like, if you are between having children or you're not going to have children, a lot of times they say, you know, if you're on birth control pills, that lowers your risk of ova ovarian cancer. So it's kind of a similar thing with rats. So that's why I consider spaying them to reduce their risk of mammary cancer. However, um... Spaying a cat or a dog is different than spaying a rat. It is, rats are such small, delicate creatures compared to cats and dogs. With cats and dogs, this stuff has been done for years. With rats, it is, um, it can be risky. And when I was a girl, I had a rat. When I was a kid, I had a rat named Nyla. She was this big white rat. And she was really friendly, but she developed um, mammary tumors. And at the time, I didn't know anything about spaying, neutering of these rats or anything to that effect. So... Anyway, Nala developed uh, mammary tumors, and so the tumors had to be removed. I didn't have a choice about whether to fix her or not. They had the tumors had to go, and so my mother and I went and you know went through with the surgery for her, and she actually died from the surgery. Like she passed away shortly after the surgery. I don't know whether it was the anesthesia or what, but um, rats are very small and delicate. And after that traumatic experience with um, Nyla dying after surgery, I was nervous about having surgery with other rats. So I was looking for like a, like an alternative to surgery. And like I said, with the humans, birth control pills and stuff like that can kind of even out the hormone levels and reduce the risk of ovarian cancer. So I was thinking maybe there's something hormonally that we can do for these rats that can kind of suppress the hormones, even things out and reduce their risk of mammary cancer. So I did some research online and there's this implant called Hopefully I don't butcher the pronunciation, but Suprelorin, Suprelor, the Suprelorin implant. Um, the generic form is Deslorelin. Hopefully I pronounced it correctly. Don't kill me if I did not. But um, it does kind of what birth control pills do in humans, which is which in humans, which is kind of even out the hormones, suppress things, and lower the risk of certain types of female-related cancers, basically. So it's like an implant. It goes into them with this big old needle, and it goes into them like between the shoulder blades and um yeah it goes into them between the shoulder blades and it goes in kind of like a microchip it's about the size of a grain of rice 
and yeah, and it's good for like a year. And um, yeah, rats don't live that long anyway, so I doubt you'll have to do it that often. They live maybe about three years anyway, so I doubt you'll have to go through this process too many times. But um, so I figured that would be a good alternative to the spaying. So I talked to an exotic vet in my area. She was willing to do it. Her name is Dr. Cisco at Friendship Veterinary Hospital on West Little Creek. So she agreed to do it. And yesterday, these girls had it done. I was a little bit worried about it because, you know, they're my friends, they're my little babies, but they came through it fine. Like when they got home, they drank a lot of water and they seemed, their bodies felt a bit hot, hotter than it normally is. So uh, and I guess that was, you know, it was any type of medical procedure. Sometimes you can be a little bit out of it that day. So yeah, so they seem to be doing really well right now. And I'm pleased that I went through with the implant for the girls. And the doctor says I probably won't have to deal with, you know, getting them another implant until about 12 to 14 months from yesterday. Um, let's see what else I was going to say. Actually, this implant is used most often in ferrets because ferrets can develop some kind of adrenal problem. So this hormone therapy can kind of work for ferrets as well. It can also be used in birds like, you know, domestic birds like cockatiels and stuff like that. And it can also be used in chickens. Like a lot of times if you have a bird that's being, that has an issue with laying eggs and that's egg bound, you can use this to kind of suppress her hormones so that she doesn't keep laying eggs and get egg bound again. So if you have a, a bird with reproductive issues, it can also work for her. So anyway, the rats are doing well. As you can see, they're crawling all over me and all this kind of stuff like this. So they're doing fine. They seem to be taking the implant really well. And I'm happy that I went through with it. Um, some places say that they will give them a bit of a sedative for it, but they didn't really need a sedative. They were, the doctor said they were very good. They took them in the back and did it. So the doctor said they were very good. They didn't need a sedative or anything like that. And so with this, I avoided all the risk of anesthesia and everything like that. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment box below. And, um, I will also add some links in the bottom description, um, area so that you can see, you can read a little bit more about the implant. And if you have a ferret or a rat or a chicken or something who needs it, maybe you can get this for them. And, um, yeah, I'll put a few links to some other information that you can read online about it. And I hope this video finds you well and everybody have a great day. Alrighty. The girls say bye. Alrighty. Bye.